Over millions of years, animals have adapted and evolved an arsenal of deadly weapons to hunt, defend, and attack. Teeth, claws, antlers, electricity, stings, camouflage, odor, and poisons are all being used to devastating effect in the animal armory. The use of venom and poison to kill enemies or capture prey has been utilized by humans ever since we witnessed animals using it in the wild. Many animals are venomous, but few are as deadly as these. Although their rattles give ample warning to potential predators, the venom of the rattlesnake has proved invaluable in its search for food and protection. The stonefish is a master of disguise, but when threatened, it shoots out deadly spines from its back, ensuring its predator a painful death. More notably, the scorpion has been a symbol of terror for thousands of years, thanks to its whip-like tail that stabs its victims, delivering a lethal dose of venom. Another sea creature with an uncanny ability to camouflage itself is the blue-ringed octopus, whose bite causes paralysis and eventually death. Cane toads have been introduced to countries where they don't naturally occur. Thanks to their toxic skin, almost all potential predators will avoid them, allowing them to dominate vast areas of land. The funnel web spider latches onto its victim, biting multiple times with massive fangs and delivering venom that can kill an adult human in as little as 15 minutes. The Gila monsters possess a venom so powerful that cowboys would tell tales of their fatal bites. And fire ants despite their size, possess a venom that when deployed from thousands of ants in a single colony, has the potential to kill almost any creature. Images of the most powerful deities worshipped by the Aztecs and Mayans were emblazoned with depictions of the rattlesnake, their vision serpent, who worked as a conduit between this world and the next. And the rattlesnake's connection with death is well deserved. Native to the Americas and ranging from British Columbia to Argentina, are 42 known species of rattlesnake. Their size can range anywhere between 1 to 8 feet long. They live in a wide variety of habitats, but are mainly found near open, rocky plains where they can bask in the sun take cover from predators and hunt prey. They favor small animals like birds, lizards and rodents.
Their name comes from their warning call, the loud shaking of the rattle at the end of their tail. Ground squirrels and king snakes, who are immune to their venom, pay no attention to the warning. But these snakes are famous for more than just their tail. Rattlers, as they are commonly known, are the leading cause of snake bite injuries in North America. Despite this, it's rare for a rattlesnake to bite unless provoked. When hunting, they can patiently wait for their prey or actively seek them out in various holes. Rather than using constriction like many other snakes, the rattlesnake will strike in half a second injecting their prey with venom. Rattlesnakes deliver their venom through fangs connected to ducts, which in turn are connected to glands on the outer edge of the upper jaw near the back of the head. When biting, muscles around the glands contract, squeezing venom into the fangs. When not in use, the fangs are folded away against the palate. They are born with fully functioning fangs and venom, and most rattlesnakes can even control how much venom they inject. The venom destroys tissue and prevents blood from clotting. A bite from the rattlesnake can cause severe paralysis. The older the snake, the more venom it possesses. If bitten, the snake's prey doesn't immediately die and appears to escape. But it doesn't take long for the venom to act. Through scent, the rattlesnake can track its prey until it eventually dies. Using its tongue and prodding with its snout, the rattlesnake locates the head of its prey and consumes the creature whole. The digestive juices of the rattlesnake are very powerful, breaking down flesh, bone, feathers, and everything in between. If the prey is small, the snake will continue to hunt. But if large enough, it'll find somewhere warm and safe to rest while digesting, until it's time to hunt again. For millennia, the Australian Aborigines have told stories of the people who fell victim to the ocean's most venomous fish, the stonefish. Found throughout the coastal regions of the Indo-Pacific, they are extraordinarily dangerous and fatal to even humans.
Their danger doesn't just come from their deadly venom, but their supreme camouflage. Stonefish are often brown or grey with patches of yellow, orange or red and are easily mistaken for rocks or coral. On average, they grow up to 14 inches, but they have been documented to grow up to 20 inches. They can usually be found amongst rubble and coral, under rocks or ledges, and on the ocean's floor. While some prefer to bury themselves in the sand. Their camouflage allows them to be deadly ambush hunters, lying in wait for fish or crustaceans to swim by. Known as the world's most venomous fish, one may think the stonefish uses its venom to hunt, but this isn't true. Their true weapon is speed. High-speed cameras are needed to properly see their attacks. Their venom, however, is a defense mechanism. When preyed upon, the stonefish first rely on their camouflage. Failing that, it uses its venom. Each stonefish possesses 13 rigid dorsal fin spines, capable of injecting its venom. When disturbed or threatened, it will raise these spines to pierce the creatures threatening it. Their venom possesses both cardiovascular and neuromuscular toxicity. Often, the stonefish is the last meal for unsuspecting predators, or a painful reminder to people wading through the ocean. These deadly and elusive creatures wait patiently to use their lethal weapon, as and when they're required. Often referred to as ancient animals, Scorpions have existed for over 400 million years, predating the dinosaurs. They have always struck terror in the hearts of people, thanks to their fearsome look and venomous sting. The scorpion is found all over the world with almost 2,000 different species.
Able to live in most environments, from deserts to jungles, scorpions can live to anywhere from six months to 25 years. They are arachnids, most closely related to spiders and ticks, and spend their days under rocks and in crevices. It's in the night, under the cover of darkness, that the scorpion hunts. They will hunt the same territory for their entire lives, but use a variety of methods to get their food. Most scorpions hunt insects and spiders using their venomous stinger. Some will wait by their burrow, claws open and stinger ready, hitting prey with a surprise attack as it passes by. Others actively forage for their prey. Due to their poor eyesight, scorpions use brush-like sensory structures on their legs to feel their way around. Being carnivores, their diet consists solely of the animals they catch. Using two large claws located at the front of their body, the scorpion grips its prey, allowing its metasoma, a tail-like structure containing the sharp stinger and venom glands, to strike the creature, injecting it with a venom and ultimately killing it. Thanks to their venom, the scorpion can eat undisturbed. All scorpions are venomous. They have multiple toxins in their venom, each with a different effect. Only a select few of the species have a venom that is potent enough to kill a human. Scorpions have tiny mouths, only capable of sucking up liquids. Once captured, enzymes in the venom dissolve their prey's insides, allowing the scorpion to eat it from the inside out. They don't eat often, only once every two to three weeks on average. Scorpion venom isn't used just to subdue prey, but also for protection. Predators like centipede, shrews, owls, bats and coyote all prey on scorpions. But it's the meerkat and mongoose that are their biggest threat, as both animals are immune to the scorpion's venom.
Other male scorpions are also a threat. When one finds its way into the territory of another, they may fight to the death, with the winner eating the loser. In addition to impeccable camouflage and a flexible body that can fit into the smallest of spaces, the fascinating blue-ringed octopuses possess venom that can kill. The blue-ringed octopus is one of the world's most venomous sea creatures and is commonly found off the coast of New South Wales, South Australia and Western Australia. They have a lifespan of around two years. At around one to four inches in size and seemingly docile, at first glance they look innocuous as they go about hunting small crabs, shrimp and fish. But when threatened or provoked, their body lights up with iridescent blue rings, contrasting against their normally yellowish skin. This is a warning that they are ready to attack, with a venom powerful enough to kill almost any enemy, including humans. Like other octopus species, all kinds of blue-ringed octopus make the most of their surroundings. They spend most of their time hiding in cracks and crevices, blending in seamlessly with their environment. This protects them from predators like moray eels, gropers, sharks and snapper. From their hidden position, the blue-ringed octopus pounces on its prey, ensnaring it in its tentacles. The mouth of the blue-ringed octopus is a horn-like beak located at the center of where its tentacles meet. It uses it to pierce through the exoskeleton of crab and shrimp to release its venom into the prey, produced by bacteria in the salivary glands. The venom contains tetrodotoxin, a powerful neurotoxin that paralyzes muscles and organs while the victim is still conscious. It isn't long before all the organs are paralyzed and the creature is effectively killed. Hmm? 
blue-ringed octopuses carry enough venom to kill 26 adult people. And with no anti-venom currently available, it remains one of the deadliest inhabitants of the ocean. So far, we have witnessed four animals that use venom to hunt and defend themselves. The rattlesnake dominates the Americas with the toxic venom it delivers through its fangs, following a warning from its rattling tail. The stonefish are efficient ambush hunters whose venomous spines do nothing to help them find food but protect them from would-be predators. The deadly scorpion, found all over the world, grabs its prey in its claws to strike it with a stinger on its tail to deliver its lethal venom. And the blue-ringed octopus, so called for its iridescent blue rings that flare up on its skin before it inflicts a venomous bite that can easily kill a human. These are only a few of the animals that use venom in their armory. Originally from the Americas, then used as biological control for pests in the sugarcane fields of northern Australia, the cane toad has become a pest itself due to its rapid reproduction and a lack of predators. The cane toad is a large terrestrial toad native to South and Central America, but is now found throughout the Oceanic region, the Caribbean and Australia. Females are significantly bigger than the males of the species, with an average length of four to six inches and a life expectancy of 10 to 15 years in captivity. They are prolific breeders, with the females laying thousands of eggs at a time. Their penchant to breed have made them invasive pests in countries where they've been introduced, where they were intended to combat other pests, like the cane beetle. But it takes more than a voracious sexual appetite for these toads to reach plague proportions. Vision is the primary method by which cane toads detect their prey, but they also have a keen sense of smell. Cane toads will eat small rodents, reptiles, other amphibians, birds, and just about anything else they can fit in their mouth, including plants, dog food, and household rubbish. Thanks to their non-discriminatory diet, the toads thrive. The poison glands on their skin make them highly toxic, killing most animals that eat them, limiting the number of predators to keep the species in check. Cane-toad's skin is dry and warty, with ridges above the eyes that run down to the snout. 
They can be grey, yellowish, reddish brown or olive in complexion with different patterns. A large parotoid gland is situated behind each eye with smaller ones across the back that produce the poison. Even cane toad tadpoles are highly toxic if ingested. Their poison is the perfect defense. In its natural habitat, predators include wetland birds like ibis, eels, snakes and bullet ants. They cannot avoid being preyed upon or eaten, but they can take their attacker down with them. The glands on their skin secrete a milky white fluid called bufotoxin that kills not just animals, but also humans if ingested. The toad's poison is so toxic, it has allowed it to dominate in a variety of landscapes, turning a solution into an even bigger problem. Striking fear into the heart of arachnophobes since its discovery. With an aggressive reputation and arguably the world's most toxic spider venom, the funnel web is a force to be reckoned with, both in the Australian bush and suburbs. Funnel web spiders are a subfamily of spiders with around 40 species that are all native to Australia. Funnel webs live mostly off a diet of insects, but occasionally hunt small reptiles and frogs. Many of these species produce venom which is lethal to humans and animals alike. The most potent of which belongs to the Sydney funnel web spider. Funnel webs range in size from half an inch to two inches in length with a hairless carapace that covers the front of their body. They have long spinnerets off the back of the abdomen and possess large fangs that unlike most other spiders point down along the body, not towards each other through which the venom is injected. Funnel web fangs are so powerful they can easily penetrate a fingernail or soft shoe. They make their burrows in moist, cool habitats like under rocks, logs or rough barked trees. It's common to find them in suburban gardens, containing rockeries and shrubs, but barely in the open. A funnel web's burrow contains irregular silk trip lines that protrude from the entrance. These trip lights signal to the spider when prey is nearby, so they can rush from their burrow and ambush their unsuspecting victim.
females are much larger than the males, but the males have longer fangs. Adult males wander during the warmer seasons to look for females to mate with. They are attracted to water, often falling into swimming pools, and they can survive underwater for several hours thanks to the air bubbles that attach themselves to their bodies. They aren't normally aggressive, but if threatened, the funnel web spider will ferociously defend itself rearing back, raising its front legs in the air and baring its fangs before striking. Some venomous spiders don't always inject venom when they bite. However, it's very rare for this spider not to inject venom when it strikes. Male Sydney funnel webs have been known to produce fatalities thanks to its specialized venom that only affects primates. Due to the size of the spider's fangs, the funnel web's bite is very painful, leaving puncture wounds and local bleeding. If bitten, it takes only minutes, depending on the size of the victim, before symptoms rapidly progress. Without treatment, a human can be dead within 15 minutes of being bitten. Funnel web spider venom contains chemicals that attack the nervous system of humans and other primates. Oddly, it doesn't affect the nervous system of other mammals. An anti-venom was developed in the early 1980s, and since then, no human has died from the bite of a funnel-web spider. In the American Old West, Pioneers told stories of great lizards with toxic breath and a deadly bite. These stories evolved from true events about the Gila monster, a venomous lizard. They are easily identified by their black bodies with patterns of pink, orange or yellow. Gila monsters usually weigh up to one and a half pounds, with the heaviest being recorded at five pounds. They move very slowly and grow up to two feet in length. Living in scrubland, succulent desert and oak woodlands, they take shelter in burrows, thickets and under rocks. They love water and are often observed immersing themselves in puddles after rain. Ninety percent of a Gila monster's life is spent underground in their burrows or in rocky shelters. Their activity above ground depends on the seasons. In spring and in early summer, they emerge in the mornings, while later in summer, they prefer the warm nights. Coyotes and raptor birds are the predominant threats to Gila monsters. While they themselves prey upon the eggs of various animals, and sometimes small birds, mammals, reptiles, insects and carrion, 
as and when the opportunity presents itself. Even though it hunts a wide variety of creatures, the Gila monster eats very infrequently, only five to ten times a year. For this reason, when it does feed, it will eat up to a third of its own body mass. The Gila monster deploys its advanced armory. Its sense of smell is so acute that it can locate and dig up eggs buried up to six inches deep in the ground. and even track a trail made by a rolling egg. Once the prey is located and caught, it's crushed to death in its mouth, or if small enough, eaten alive. But its hunt for food isn't restricted to the ground. Gila monsters can climb trees and cacti in their search for eggs. The Gila monster produces venom and saliva glands located in its lower jaw. They lack the muscular force to actually inject any venom. Instead, it's transferred from the gland to the teeth by chewing. This chewing action draws the venom from the gland to the tooth and into the victim. The Gila monster is one of the few venomous lizards in the world. Because Gila monsters usually prey on helpless creatures and eggs, it's believed their venom has evolved as a defense mechanism, along with their bright coloring, warning potential threats of their toxicity. The venom of the Gila monster contains neurotoxins. And even though it's as potent as that of a coral snake, the Gila monster produces only very small amounts. Though they move slowly, these lizards can bite very quickly. And once they latch on, can be very difficult to remove, causing the victim a great deal of pain. Aside from the creature's monstrous appearance, its armory makes the Gila monster a formidable foe for those who share its desert habitat. There are thousands of species of ants, but only a small minority of these species have the ability to sting and inject a victim with venom. The most famous of these ants have been introduced to several countries around the world, where they are now considered dangerous pests. Easily recognized by their red color and painful sting, the fire ant is known by a variety of names, depending on where in the world they are. Fire ant is considered an invasive species. They are recognizable by their black, reddish bodies and their size, less than a quarter of an inch. Mature fire ants look like any other ant, with bodies typical of any insect.
This three-sectioned body includes the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, with three pairs of legs and a pair of antennae. Many species of ants bite, and former seen ants can even spray acid to irritate their victims. But fire ants have a dedicated alkaloid venom sting, as well as mandibles for biting. Within a large nest of fire ants, workers exist in a variety of sizes, which is rare among ants. A colony produces large mounds in open areas, where they feed mostly on plants and seeds. But fire ants are also extremely aggressive and often attack small animals, killing them. Where other ants bite and then spray their acid on the wound, fire ants only bite to grip their victim and then sting them from the abdomen to inject the venom. It creates a painful sting that's likened to being burned, hence the name. The aggression of the fire ant usually pushes native ants out of the local habitat, leaving little to no competition for food in the area. Fire ants build their nests near rivers, ponds and other areas with moist soil. The nests are often concealed underneath objects like rocks or logs. If there is no cover, dome-shaped mounds are created, reaching heights of 16 inches. A colony is usually founded by a small group of queen ants. But even if only one of them survive, it can quickly expand into thousands of ants. Queens, or the reproductive females in the colony, are usually the largest of the fire ants, with the sole purpose of reproducing. Males mate with the queens and die immediately after copulation. Other roles in the colony include the soldier ants, who have larger, stronger mandibles, and the workers, whose job it is to maintain the upkeep of the nest, foraging for food and caring for the eggs and the larvae. Forage flies inject their eggs inside the fire ant's thorax. As the ant dies, the larvae will move into the ant's head and the adult fly will emerge. Thousands of years, human beings have used poison as a means to execute, assassinate and murder their foes. The very idea of these attacks were learned from animals in the wild, who have continued to evolve and hone their use of venom in battle. The rattlesnake, that gives warning before biting a threat and injecting them with their lethal venom. The stonefish, a master of disguise that defends itself with venomous spines. The scorpion, whose tail contains a venomous stinger it uses to both hunt prey and defend itself. The blue-ringed octopus, while small, contains enough venom to kill 26 adult humans.
the cane toad doesn't sting or bite. Instead, its skin is covered in a toxic substance that when eaten by a predator is lethal. The funnel web spider defends itself with aggressive attacks through multiple bites that deliver venom that can kill a man in under half an hour. The Gila monster's venomous bite was made famous through stories told by cowboys in the Old West. And fire ants completely dominate any landscape they establish a colony in, killing creatures much larger than them. Human beings have adapted to become the dominant force on the planet. But where we have evolved intellectually, animals continue to evolve physically, granting them the powerful weaponry found in the animal armor.